Talk a little bit about sort of the progress you think you've made with SpaceX. Sure. Well, I mean, there's a lot of things where I, I think I, I didn't think we'd be successful. Um, so the the um, probably and the most significant thing is being able to land an an, an orbit class rocket uh, boost stage um, and uh, and bring it both back to Cape Canaveral and uh, land on land and be able to land on a drone ship out in the ocean. Um, the um, it, it, there is a bit of an education process that's needed to understand orbital dynamics um, because a lot of people can, are confused of like why the heck are you landing a ship, uh, landing a rocket in a on a ship in the ocean? That seems pretty inconvenient. Um, and the, the reason is because that uh, going up and staying up is actually about velocity horizontal to the Earth's surface. So. Um, there's a huge difference between space and or space and or, and orbit. Like space, you could think of as like, say, being the international waters boundary for the Pacific Ocean. Like if you go, you know, uh, 100 miles offshore, you're technically out of yes. coastal waters. Now you're in the Pacific. Right. So it's like technically you're in the Pacific, but but it's but orbit is like circumnavigating the globe. Right. It, it's, it's a really giant difference, and the, the the reason that things go up and stay up is because you're, you're zooming around the Earth so fast that your outward radial acceleration is equal to the inward acceleration of gravity. And so those balance out, and you have a net zero gravity. So when you see the space station, the thing that's a little, little sort of um, counterintuitive is that the space station is actually zooming around the Earth at 17,000 miles an hour. Even though it seems like it's just... It seems really still, you know, but it's moving really, really fast. Um, I mean, to put that into perspective, um, a bullet from a 45 um, gun, you know, handgun, um, is is is, is uh, just below the speed of sound. So, the space station is going more than 25 times faster than that, um, okay. and that's what's needed actually to go up and stay up. Um, and that's why that's why the, there's the term escape velocity, not escape right. altitude. There's no such thing as an escape altitude. There's only an escape velocity. You need to be a certain speed to escape the gravity of the Earth. Yeah, you can think of gravity as kind of a funnel in space-time. Um, so uh, we're thinking of like a coin funnel. Like it's, it's really it's very much like that in, in you know, but it's obviously a, sort of a four-dimensional coin funnel. But uh, if, if you if you spin a spin a marble or a coin on a coin funnel, the it, it, when it's when it's far out, it sort of spins slowly, and then as it gets closer, it spins faster and faster. And if you want, if you want, if you were to start at the bottom of the coin funnel and you wanted to 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 to, to exit, you'd spin it horizontally, and, and it would it would spin out, and 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 that's really how you how you get to orbit. Um, um, in order to get to orbit, you all that matters is your horizontal velocity. Your altitude is doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, in fact, the the um, the force of gravity at uh, say the sort of nominal. Um, boundary of space, 100 kilometers, is almost exactly the same as it is on the surface of the Earth. Hmm. Um, it's, like if it's a few percent lower than, than the surface of the Earth. Um, uh, so in, in order to go up and stay up, the only thing that matters is how fast are you going horizontal to the Earth's surface. So you have that outward radial acceleration, or think of it like maybe like tetherball or something like that. It's really that outward acceleration is the thing that matters. Um, and so when the rocket is going to orbit, um, the only reason it's going up is to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere. Because at, at high velocity, the atmosphere is thick as molasses. Um, and so it goes up very briefly. But if you look at a long exposure of the, the rocket's uh, trajectory, you'll see it, it goes up, but immediately curves over and starts going horizontal. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, um, at, at, the, at the point at which the uh, the, uh, the, at the point at which the stages separate, those two stages, um, the, the primary boost stage, which is the most expensive part of the rocket, the point at which that, st that staging occurs uh, can be um, as high as uh, Mach 10. Um, but it's, it's, so it's going away from the launch site at 10 times the speed of sound. So in, in order to get back to the launch site, you would have to have enough uh, nice. fuel and oxygen to reverse out that velocity and, and, and boost back all the way to the launch site. Um, and you just don't have, the physics of it don't really allow you to have that much 
it's, it's not about saving money on fuel or anything, it's just physically impossible. Um, so, um, it, because another sort of thing about uh, if, you're, if you're in space is that there's nothing to react against. So, like whereas an aircraft can, can circle very easily because it's reacting against air, in vacuum there's nothing to react against. So the only way to go back the other direction is to apply just as much energy as it took you to go, it, if you want to go backwards, you have to apply just as much energy as it took you to go forwards. Mm -hmm. In fact, well, twice as much, really, because you've got to zero it out, and then you've got to... So you've yeah. got to land elsewhere. Yeah, so bottom line is this thing is zinging out to, zinging out to so, sea at super, at 10 times so faster than point, a bullet. It may well be over the ocean, because the ocean covers most of the... Oh, it's, it's, it's actually, at the point of separation, it's not that far away, it's maybe 100, kilometers away from the, the launch site, but it is going like hell in the opposite, you know, away from the launch site. So the, the, the only way to really land it is to have it continue on that arc, that ballistic arc, and then land far out to sea on a ship that's, that's pre-positioned to a particular uh, latitude and longitude, very, very precise to within about a meter. Um, and then the, the rocket will um, then go from vacuum through rarefied air at hypersonic velocity. Uh, um, it, and, and what, so when it's, in, when it's in vacuum, it has to, obviously you can't use aerosurfaces, you have to use um, nitrogen jets to control the, um, the attitude and position. And then um, as it starts to encounter uh, the air, um, we use um, grid fins, because grid fins uh, look like, sort of like a waffle. Um, that they work quite well across a wide regime from both very high velocity um, hypersonics through supersonic, transonic, and subsonic. Um, so it's hard, to, it's, it's hard to have aerosurfaces that work well across that entire regime. And then, uh, so once the air, air forces become high, it uses the, um, the four grid fins to, to sort of control its attitude. To and, land itself. Yeah, it's, it's controlling its it's, it's controlling pitch, yaw, and roll with with the grid fins, um, and uh, and then once and th those grid fins will then position it to where it's fairly close to the ship, and then it will light. In this case, three of the nine engines to arrest the velocity, and then drop to one engine for precision right before landing. Right. Okay. So, super so that was hard. A, but maybe a bit of so a wait, long explanation. No, that's but okay, <laughs> what we're going to get to is that's super fucking hard. There's a video. So why, video. why is that important? Why has that, this moment been important for you? Um, well, so in order to reuse the, the boost stage, which is right. about 70% of the cost of the rocket. So the, Wh which cost is that? How much is that? Um, well, I mean, it's sort of on the order of 30 to $35 million. Right, so you want to save that. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I try to I tell my team, it's like, imagine there was a pallet of cash that was plummeting through the atmosphere <laughs> <laughs> and it was going to burn up and smash into tiny pieces, would you try to save it? Right, right, right. Probably yes. Yes, okay. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like a good idea. Right, okay. Uh -huh. um, so, so yeah, so we, 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 we want to get it back right. and that way um, we don't have to make another one. Right. Um, and I think it's quite tragic if rockets like, get smashed into tiny pieces and there was no... Um, Return. It's the first time that, that a, a rocket boost has returned to launch site right. um, from an orbital mission, and, and certainly the first time that there's been a, a landing on a ship out But the sea. regular rockets that went up that weren't designed like planes never tried to do this. Right. Um, the plane thing is not, not a good idea in my view. Um, the, so so the, the, the plane, um, and the, the reason I think is, like intuitively it seems like a plane should work, but, but actually, if you, th if you consider that, really every mode of transport has a design that is appropriate to its medium. Um, and if you're in space, um, wings are not very useful, because mm -hmm. um, there's no air. Mm -hmm. uh. um, and, and, and then if you want to go somewhere other than Earth, there's also no runways. Uh -huh. So this is, these are important considerations. Um, <laughs> So that's why when they went to the moon, they used propulsive landing. Right, but what I'm saying was when they built the space shuttle, it sort of was like a, looked like a 
kind of bulbous. I think that appealed plane. to Congress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they went cool. That's cool. Yeah. It looked so like can, an airplane. Can,